I mean, it sounds beautiful. I think, like, even this, just this one note, like... That's the cave. Mm -hmm. Love on Valentine's. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Met much love. Ah, oh, you give me so much love. It's the first time I've brought an instrument to play inside of another instrument. <laughs> I think that might be the first one. Real. Anyways. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet this you. This is going to be so much fun. Oh Given the logical progression of this channel, today yeah. I'm going to be playing a cave. There you go. Of course. <laughs> Why not? We've been continuously getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Love it. This might be it until we figure out how to tune the moon or something. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a cave. This was all dug out to get to the cave. Well, it was a little right Whose idea was this, Bill? This was uh, <laughs> in 1878, wow. three local guys were actually looking for a cave. They thought if they could find a cave, they could open it up and make lots of money. Three local men uh, found this little sinkhole with a, about a quarter size hole with cool air coming out. Thought, That's unusual on a hot summer day and discovered Ray Caverns, wow. one of the largest and most beautiful caverns in the world. This was just under... Yes, it's a, it's a closed cave. System. I'm new to caves. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's I, a, I know about these. Yeah, this is sure. a new instrument for me. There was a big block of limestone and it eroded over millions of years and left these rooms with the stalactites that come from the ceiling and the stalagmites that come from the ground. So mm. this, is, we're looking at millions of years yes limestone absolutely the largest uh, formation we have down here is seven million years old i found this place searching for the biggest instrument in the world there you go which is you know my corner of the internet yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. this one took about seven million years to build if we wanted to classify it as yeah. an instrument build yeah i'd say that's right so how how big is the cave lurie caverns is 64 wow. acres the path is about a mile and a quarter walk Oh, with, with, with me? <laughs> yeah, okay. Here. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Hey, Thank pleasure you. meeting you. And we're seeing it being built as we see the drippings from it. Exactly, it's, it's an very... active cave. Yeah. Uh, here's a Dream or Mara Lake. Uh, we call it Dream Lake because it's the perfect reflection of the ceiling. That is unbelievable. So whose idea was it to tune it? To tune the caverns? Who decided to turn this into an instrument? Leland W. Sprinkle. He was a mathematician, uh, worked for the Pentagon. He came through on a tour with his five-year-old son. The tour guides at that time would kind of get off the path and tap on stalactites <laughs> to show that they would make a little musical tone. <laughs> So they played Mary Had a Little Lamb or simple songs really? like that. Yeah. He went to the management, presented this ID. He's like, I think I could hook up these stalactites and make an organ out of it. And <laughs> yeah, what, what year would that? That would have been 1954. Mm. So he spent nights down here, weekends, going around with his uh, 13 English tuning forks, looking <laughs> for stalactites that would match the musical scale. Yeah. So they already find ones that were close? We had found one that was kind of close to the perfect pitch, Yeah. but then they would tune the other ones by grinding off the bottoms, <laughs> tapping it until he got the right tone. So they just had to find ones that were a little bit flat and yeah. then grind it off and then grind it. Yeah. That's what they did. And you, I can't believe that you would get a good tone out of that. You do get a good tone out of yeah. it. I mean, a musical tone. It's yeah. crazy. But. And, and how, do you, how do you regulate the volume? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it you said it took three years. It took him three years. We're getting ready to come into the cathedral room with home of the great stalagpipe organ. Oh we my go all night God. Long. <laughs> so these, is this, the, is this it? This is, this is the organ oh here. Oh my God. And this is the cathedral room. What? That? <laughs> is it all in this room? The notes are spread out all over the caverns. Larry Moore, your cave technician. <laughs> How does this work? The organ uses stalactites as tone sources. Mm -hmm. They're within about three and a half acres of this room, mm -hmm. which makes it the largest musical instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we got that on record. Basically, uh, right now you're standing inside the organ. Mm -hmm. If I were to walk up to the console and press down on the key, it would send yeah. a signal to a solenoid, which would tap a like selected right stalactite. Here. And so that's a hammer that is going to smack in. I, and I love how you can see where it was shaved off too. The solenoid actually strikes the stalactite. And then down below at the bottom, there's a half nickel, half iron bolt with a magnetic pickup next to it. Oh. And that picks up the vibration and tone. Yeah. Brings it back to this room because yeah. some of them are so far away in other rooms. Yeah. A lot of the notes are in here. A, but a how lot many of them are in, in this here. room? Well, I'd say a dozen, maybe. A dozen? Are they all around? They're all around. The stalactites cover three and a half acres. Coming back from that tone, mm -hmm. uh, the tone source, back to this room, it takes a lot of cable and all yeah. some amplification to do that. Yeah. So. Okay, so there are amps involved. Yeah, there are amps okay. involved. Okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yep. <laughs> Where's that coming from? Yep. 
play is like a player piano type thing. So we have a little button over here, we'll push when the tours come through. So it's a live oh. performance, but no one's sitting at the keyboard playing. Whoa. Dang. Kind of sounds like bells. That's unbelievable. Oh, I wish I played keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a good place to start. Sure, yeah. Totally. Yeah, this start seems like a good place to start. Could, there's only one way up. Yeah. <laughs> Can we play it? Yeah. You guys look so great. <laughs> yeah, oh my house. So, cool. <laughs> so this is your office, Otto? This is your concert hall? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Otto Pebworth, Cavern Organist. That is a cool job title, sir. Thank you. <laughs> when I got in here, I had accidentally stepped on a stalactite. <laughs> was it right at your feet? How often do you perform here? Basically, when uh, I get a call that there's a special group coming in, oh, okay. they'll, uh, they'll get an extra special treat because mm -hmm. as opposed to hearing me and playing on automatic mode, mm -hmm. Otto the organist actually plays. Yeah. Well, you got exactly. Otto and Otto. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So it's yeah. always Otto here. Right. So with there being, you said four octaves. It's actually, it's, uh, three octaves. Three octaves. Notes. Okay, it's so 37 notes. And that is 37 stalactites yes. on the ceiling? Yes. So each individual one. Scattered all over multiple acres. Yeah. <laughs> which is the reason why you have the pickups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, otherwise, you could barely hear it. We can see one of the, is that the closest stalactite that you can play? Yes, I believe that is the closest to here. Can that we do that one first? That sounds beautiful. It is. It took quite a while to find those 36. Yeah. <laughs> several yeah. years. I mean, it sounds beautiful. I think, like, even just this one note, like, I'm surprised how, it sounds great. That's the cave. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Tuba told me I had to play rain. <laughs> Beautiful. You would expect a cave to, I mean, I don't know what I would expect a cave to sound like, but not like that, you know? It's the unique beauty of this particular yeah. one yeah. of a kind instrument. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, these are... <laughs> these are, the, the upper manuals are for, upper <laughs> keyboards are just for show. Uh, I really went for that note. I was so confident about that one. I don't know whether he said, maybe one day we'll do that, maybe not, I don't know. It does look more impressive with Oh, more, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to tell, where's the range? Lots of times the octaves repeat, but basically the range runs from here to here or here to here. And this one? On this lower keyboard, it's pretty much just the lower, the lower notes only playing one at a time. Yeah. Well, here we have other notes playing together because this is playing a little bit brighter than this one does. Oh, okay. So it's the same 37 stalactites, but this Correct. gets two at a time, and this gets just one Correct. for the bass notes. And what is the lowest note we have here? The uh, lowest note would actually be this, bottom C, and it's back up in there. Being a mechanical, as it is sometimes, it gets a little... <laughs> oh, it's, a... it's It's very damp down here, so lots of times yeah, the... Um, I can feel it. It requires... Uh, you know, ongoing maintenance. It is a lot of maintenance to the instrument just yeah. because of the environment, to the solenoids, cleaning them, keeping them working. C5 is our highest note. Oh, right there. That's, uh -huh. That's the highest one. Yep, C2 is about probably six to eight feet long. Wow. As you know, you can't go down to the store and buy parts for a stalactite pipe yep. organ. There is no stalactite pipe organ store. <laughs> We make about everything ourselves. Oh, I would we imagine. wind our own coils, we make our own magnetic mm -hmm. pickups. Yeah, and you definitely can't tour with this thing. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Stays here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Wow. I mean, look at that. It takes 120 yeah. years for an inch of a formation to grow. 120 years for, for an, an inch. inch. This is 120 yeah. years. This actually, that's... the beginning was called the ballroom, and they had a wooden floor down here. Yeah. People come down here. Saturday nights for yeah. dances because it is naturally air conditioned. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 
it's a little hard. I like the clinking of the keys is almost over. With this, you have to play it a lot differently. I mean, this is a very different, it's not like a keyboard. We can do the regular. That's nice. It's sort of like you have the piano decay, mm -hmm. but it's on an organ keyboard, which normally would not decay. So yeah. you sort of have to have a split mindset. Yeah. You know, every time I do these videos, I come in with like, oh, I'm gonna play this song, this song, and this song. You would think, oh, I'm just gonna transfer these songs over, but the, the quality of the instrument just leads you to such a different direction. Exactly. Just throw a bunch of notes at it and see if we can get it. It just works so much differently than any instrument I've ever... Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never played a cave before. That makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. What is that? It happens every time I hit that key. All right, let's listen to it. I'm, like, turning on the radio. It is your communicating FM signal. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that is what it is. You're getting an FM okay. signal off so, the so the radio is here. I'm like, is that a human voice? Like, yeah. is that, be, that a... That would be the AM radio. Yeah. Across the, AM station across the street. <laughs> but only with this note. AM radio depends on ground wave. Mm. There's a lot of grounding going on in here, and wires are laying all over, yeah. and someone may just act like an antenna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of haunting, though, in a, like in a beautiful way. I didn't think that this would also be a sampler. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can. <laughs> it sounds like I'm just walking all around, you know, sharing you, a bounce you around. Are yeah. Literally playing around several acres. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense that I would also play the smallest instrument I have with this. <laughs> Maybe I can come up with something here and you could play like a single note to go across it, but I don't have anything prepared. Yeah, that really is. I'm working with the room. It's, oh, Man, that sounded really Lovely. beautiful. This is a good accompaniment. The biggest and smallest instrument. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe you give me something. I'll figure something out.
Wrong word on my part. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool too. We're getting a little nice. bit funky. Getting the cave resonating and yeah. ringing. Yeah, really, even just with this, I mean, if we just hear the resonance from the guitar, I... I love having a ton of reverb on the music I make. Hmm. It also makes it easier for us. It, it's a little bit of a, a, oh. a, yeah, cover that you can hide behind. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of reverb, you know. Pedals the same keys as the. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm. So are these then two are just for show? Like this uh, is... Pretty much. I'm going to say there was some intent to be able mm -hmm. to do some things. Once it was set up, then they said, well, this is yeah. good. We're going to stop at this. Yeah. And you add one more key, and that adds, you know, what, 10 right. hours more of maintenance a and month. It just starts turning into a, a big jumble. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you want to keep it simple so you have that nice clarity as well with the resonance of the room. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you have to retune. Because, like, strings wear out and get out of tune, but these stalactites grow so slowly, how long would it be until you had to tune it again? Probably another century. <laughs> Even then, because of the yeah. nature of the way they were tuned and everything, you mm -hmm. would not be uh, allowed to do that by, by yeah. federal law. Oh, really? Because the caverns are treated as natural mm. uh, formations. Mm -hmm. I brought my tuning strobe down several years ago just to see what had happened since mm -hmm. the organ was built. It was dead on pitch. Yeah. That's maybe the best tuning stability of any instrument, maybe? Yes. <laughs> the video where if you don't stop me I'm going to I'm going to be here for a week I've so loved being able to be, uh, do things with it. Yeah, it is really a special thing to play the literal biggest instrument in the world. The thing I get the most enjoyment from, oh, I mean, things like this, this has been absolutely incredible. Some totally different than I've oh, done yeah, before cool. on, on, on this instrument. The thing that's given me the most joy lots of times is when school groups come through mm. and the kids will just get quiet and they'll just stand right there just absolutely fascinated. But when I first heard this instrument, first saw it and heard it, I was six. Yeah, oh really? And I came through with the tour and I remember really? that sound and several years later I came <laughs> over and ago. to do some do some uh, unrelated work and they said, hey, are you available to uh, do some playing for us? Wow. Didn't have to think that yeah. one over. <laughs>
Africa's like, absolutely. Wow. And it's such a joy. So this is your six-year-old dream to play this thing? Absolutely. Are you sure you don't want to play a song? No, I'm, sure? I, I'm good. <laughs> okay, cool. Then I'll just play it poorly for everyone then. <laughs> I enjoy playing, yeah. but I also enjoy listening to what other people can do because then it'll, in return it will inspire me mm -hmm. to, to maybe push my boundaries out a little further as mm -hmm. well. And with this, it's so much different than any other instrument. And then if you just listen for a minute. You said you weren't going to play anything. We got you. <laughs> it <laughs> and sounds was, beautiful. And, and with the dripping, too, it adds that. That's like part of the instrument. And that it, there's... With that, basically, was that something that was composed? No. Okay. And yeah. that's what this atmosphere really mm -hmm. develops is like, you know, what you were doing on your own, what we were doing together. This atmosphere produces that type mm -hmm. of, if you will, earth music. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely is earth music. And I love when we really got quiet and could hear the the dripping as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it really does make it feel like we are playing the cave. Just really quiet and just listen to the drips. Oh.
Thank you so much, Otto. Thank you. What a beautiful Thank instrument. You. Thank you. I think that ends the video. Subscribe if you would like. I'm sure this is the last time we play an instrument this big, but we'll play <laughs> other instruments. Um, and we'll see you sometime soon. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.